being an insurance market, we are in the risk business. So we've been planning this for a long time, <laughs> even before the vote last year. We thought we've got to have some contingency plans. And as soon as we knew the outcome of the referendum, we started to put in place our contingency plan, which meant looking at the various countries that Lloyds could set up in with a subsidiary to be able to continue to offer insurance for the EU customers. We've chosen Brussels, and that was after many months of discussions with various regulators. And we will have that up and running, our plan is, by the middle of next year, so that we can actually test it before the UK actually exits the EU. And that's really important. We need the licensing to be able to continue. And it's about 5% of Lloyd's global revenues. Um, so quite a considerable and important market for us. Mm -hmm. We were talking uh, in the break about your cyber insurance uh, industry or business, I should say, and, and you know, it's, it's stunning because I feel like only recently have companies and just the general public really been made aware of the threat of cyber uh, hacks and, and attacks and so on. And yet you've been offering this for, for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. So what are you seeing these days in terms of, uh, of business acceptance of spending the money on cyber because for a long time it was something that they didn't necessarily want to spend on because it wasn't something they could point to shareholders and say look we spent this money on cyber security or cyber insurance and it was worth it because mm. nothing happened <laughs> yeah and of course what what really happened was it started here in the u.s and that's because of regulation coming in kicking in and saying come on firms you've got to start getting your act together you've got we want to know what breaches you've had particularly because we want to protect the customers now that saw a massive rise in demand for cyber insurance in the US. Um, Lloyd's now writes probably 25%, 30% global market share of this. And not, um, the US used to provide 90% of that. But now we've got regulation coming in in places like Australia. We've got it coming in in Europe next year. And that's going to drive businesses to actually start thinking about buying more because they're going to have to report breaches. And particularly in, in Europe, they're going to be introducing fines. And it's all about protecting the customer's data. So we've seen a dramatic increase. What we're still trying to do, though, is understand how to add it up, how to add the exposures up, because this is a brand new risk that knows no geographic boundaries. It just cuts across the whole world. And we're very much used to dealing with physical risks, earthquake risks, you know, hurricanes. We've been modeling it for decades. But this is a brand new risk that we're trying to get our arms around. And some of these. Um, attacks, DIN, WannaCry, Petya or non-Petya or not Petya as they're calling it. We're trying to understand what the impact is um, and particularly how it impacts businesses. I would think even if you had a, one incident happen to a corporation that you don't even know if that is the end of that incident. So for instance a worm can get in and then it could mutate in some way and then cause more damage. So mm. from your perspective it seems like there could be a lot of risks potentially in this new age of cyber attacks. Mm. Some of these have been within firms uh, infrastructures for a long long time. Could, have, could right. even be years. And we also know that a lot of it is about um, not maliciously necessarily but employees right just accidentally doing something that um, lets something come into the system. So a lot of the time we spend with our clients who buy cyber insurance is helping them build more resilience into their businesses. And one of those aspects is how can they make sure their employees, all of their people know what they should and shouldn't do? Um, because it's so easy just to make that one click and there it is, it's in there. How much do you think you're going to, I mean, in terms of um, business, is this your fastest growing line of insurance? For sure, absolutely. Yeah. We, we've got premiums now about $800 million um, globally, so it's, it's quite sizable. Um, and there are some other risks, though, because with the sort of unrest in the world, the, the geopolitical uncertainty, people are buying much more insurance to protect their trade credit, so when they're trading with businesses in other countries. We've also seen a rise in demand for terrorism insurance, uh, particularly in, well, for those countries and markets where there's no national pool or government involvement. So we are seeing a rise in demand for other types of insurance, you know, when you look at what's happening in the whole world. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.